Hey everybody, Chris here with Digital Nomad University. I am coming to you from my apartment in Medellin, Colombia, and today I'm going to talk to you about how digital nomads make money online. This is probably the biggest topic that people want to know when they want to know how to switch from their normal office job into the, the digital nomad life. Making money online seems to be the biggest hurdle, but the good news is that in 2019, when, when everything is online, uh, it's, it's easier than ever to find, to find ways to make money online. There's a whole lot of ways to make money online. I'm going to go over just a few of them for you, and I'm going to demonstrate a little bit. So there's, there's so many different options here that I can't possibly go over them. So I'm going to go over a few, and I'm going to go over kind of, kind of a summary, right? Um, so this isn't going to be super, super detailed, but I will give you resources that you can use if one of these methods follows, appeals to you and you want to follow up with it and learn how to do it. So um, here are the, the uh, four ways that I'm going to go over. One is to get a remote job. Two is to find freelance work. Three is to do affiliate marketing and four is to do drop shipping. So if you don't know what those are, uh, don't worry. I'm going to go over them all one by one. So I'll start with remote jobs. Remote jobs are kind of the most obvious, right? Because the, it's, it's the easiest for most people to, to wrap their minds around. If you, if you work for a regular job, chances are, well, a lot of people work for a regular job that could be done remote, right? Um, there's a whole lot of different work that would work remote. If you're, uh, if you are a computer programmer, if you're, uh, if you're an administrative assistant, if you're an accountant, if you're a financial analyst, if you're a graphic designer, um, even if you're a doctor or a lawyer, you can do consultations completely online over Skype or something. So there are remote jobs for just about every kind of job you can imagine. And even if you don't have any skills, you could, you could, uh, do, you could teach English remote, right? There's a lot of, a lot of, uh, Chinese people will pay you to, to teach English to their kids. So, um, let me show you how to find these remote jobs because there are a lot of them in there in every different field, but it's not so well established how to find them. And a lot of people don't know how to find them. So I'm going to go over how to do that. First way is remote job sites. I'll, I'll demonstrate that for you real quick. So just go into Google and search remote jobs. Excuse my slow computer here. Search remote jobs and then, uh, there we go, weworkremotely.com. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so here you go, business and manager, management jobs, of director of education, customer success manager, HR generalist, data analyst. I got a friend I'm gonna send that to. Uh, business development, all sorts of stuff. Design jobs, just product designer, visual experience designer, um, .NET, Angular, Angular developer, that's a, that's an IT job. Sales and marketing jobs, content analyst, account executive, business broker, SEO specialist, right? A lot of marketing stuff. Programming jobs, uh, all other jobs, tax filing specialist, right? There's data scientist, online English teacher. There you go. That's a big one right now because there's so many, so many people in China that want to pay for that internet researcher for marketing. So there's, there's so many opportunities for, for remote jobs and remote jobs are nice because you get a steady paycheck. Um, and you know, they don't pay the best often, but if you're, if you're living in a place with a, with a low cost of living, if you're traveling, actually it makes up for it. Like for example, where I am in Medellin right now, I pay about a third of the price for just about everything here that I would in my home in the USA. So I am effectively tripling my income by being here. So you can, you can actually afford to take a pay cut, but a lot of these actually pay really well. So don't, you know, don't be discouraged by that. So anyway, that's, th those are the remote job sites. There's a bunch of remote job sites. Just Google remote job sites and you'll, and you'll find them. Uh, they're regular job sites like, like LinkedIn, like monster, like indeed. And these are a little more, these are a little more tricky to navigate. So I'll show you how to do that. My, my favorite one is LinkedIn. So I will go ahead and show you how I do that. 
No, the, the trick with the regular job sites is that a lot of companies will post their jobs on these regular job sites, but they, uh, it's not obvious that they're remote. So if you go in and search, um, let's go search for jobs. Or better yet, let's, yeah, let's go to this jobs tab here. So if you search the location as remote, you'll come up with some. Oh, actually you come up with a lot. So that's one of a balloon artist, that's interesting. I can't imagine that's actually remote. Some of them, some of them are mislabeled. So you'll have to be aware of that. A lot of them from the same company, Assurance. Um, and then you can search, you know, the type of job that you're looking for. And then uh, the problem with, with doing this, though, is that a lot of them are, are not labeled remote. Like a lot of, a lot of recruiters, they, if they work for a company in Seattle, Washington, let's say, then they will rate the location as Seattle, Washington. And unless you're actually searching for jobs in Seattle, Washington, you're never going to find them, even though they're remote jobs and you don't ever have to set foot in Seattle to actually get them. So what you can do is search remote in the, uh, in the, the job search bar instead of the location bar. And yeah, let's say remote United States. And see, I had 130,000 results, now I have 200,000 results. There's a whole lot more if I, if I search remote there. So, um, see there's, it, some of them say virtual too. So search virtual sometimes instead of remote, you'll find more. Social media account manager. You find some interesting stuff in here. Like I said, just about any skill set that you might have, you can find remote jobs for. So uh, that's it for the regular job sites. You can mess with that a little bit more, but that'll get you started. Now, another one that's, that's kind of hidden is company career pages. Sometimes they won't advertise on a job site. They'll only advertise on their own career page. So you have to find that career page. And if you're looking for remote jobs and you're not looking for a specific company, then that's next to impossible to find. But one way that you can find some of these hidden remote jobs, which are awesome, by the way, because they have a lot less competition, um, you can find these by finding a company that is that allows remote work using the two steps before, using the remote job sites or the regular job sites searching for remote jobs. And then go into Google or find a company that's similar to, to what you're looking for, that's it has the kind of job that you want to do and then go into Google and search companies like, and then put that company name. Like we saw a lot from a company called assurance. So go into Google and search companies like assurance. And then you'll probably find a list of companies that do the same kind of thing as assurance does. And probably they have a similar corporate culture and probably some of those will also allow remote jobs. So you can go to those companies, career pages and look for remote jobs there. Um, Another thing is Facebook groups and newsletters. There's a bunch of Facebook groups for digital nomads and people who do remote work. And uh, one in particular that I really like is called Guava Bean. Sign up for Guava Bean. They have people that post all the time um, remote jobs and then they have a newsletter as well. So you can sign up for the newsletter where every week they will send you all of the remote jobs that have been posted in that Facebook group. So that's an awesome resource. And then of course there's just networking. You talk to people. Uh, talk to as many people as you can, talk about what they're working on, and think about how you can help them. Chances are they have something that you could help them with that you don't need to be in any office to do. So, um, you know, offer to come up with an arrangement. Okay, so that's, that's all I'll go over for remote jobs. A lot of opportunity there if that's the way you want to go. Now, if you want a little more freedom, you know, the, the problem with remote jobs is that usually you're stuck with a, a particular schedule. And so it, you can travel a lot using a remote job, but not entirely. For example, if your job is based in the US and you want to travel in Asia, well, the hours are going to be, are going to be difficult, right? Because while your well, daytime hours in, in Asia or nighttime hours in the US and vice versa. So if you want a little more flexibility, then, then freelance work might be a good way to go. And there's a bunch of different ways to get freelance work. Um, the easiest, most obvious ones are freelancing websites like Upwork.com, Freelancer.com, and Fiverr.com. Again, with freelancing work, you can do just about anything you could possibly think of. You know, if, uh, if you want to do design or you want to do coding or you want to do just 
easy stuff like data entry or a virtual assistant is a big thing. Just people, people give you their administrative tasks or uh, writing, copywriting, blogging, those are big. So if you want, a good way to start with this is if you work an office job already, think about if that job could be, could be something that you could do freelancing, right? So if you're a programmer, yeah, you could do that freelancing. If you're a graphic designer, you could do that. If you're an accountant, you could do that, et cetera, et cetera. Think about what you do now and think about, and even if it's not all of what you do now, probably you could do part of it as a freelancer. Um, so even if you're a, a surgeon, for example, if you're a surgeon, chances are you're not going to be able to do surgery remotely, right? But probably there, there are aspects of that job that you could do remotely. So maybe medical coding, that kind of thing. So, you know, think a little bit outside the box and think about what skills you already have, because that's going to be the easiest way to start. Now, uh, you can do on the freelancing sites where, where it makes real easy for you. I won't go into that too much because just go to the website and, and um, it'll, it's all self-explanatory. You just apply for jobs and put your resume out there and people hire you. Uh, the problem with freelancing sites though is they're quite competitive. So if you wanna get paid more and you wanna get the better business, then start your own freelancing business and do it on the side. So what you do there is, well, I mean, there's, again, there's a, a billion different ways that you can do this, but what I would do, I would create a simple website, either use ClickFunnels or Wix or one of those website builders that allows you to do easily. Don't even need to pay somebody to do it. Uh, get a business card printed and uh, or make a pro make a portfolio if, if that's something that's related to your niche. Like if you're an artist, for example, you'll want a portfolio. And then just uh, network. Talk to as many people as you can, both, both in person and online. Um, again, I found that, that Facebook groups are awesome for that. LinkedIn is pretty good for that. And then also a great way to, to get clients is by content, content marketing. So if you have an expertise in something, say you're an artist, um, write a blog about how to be an artist. If you're a programmer, write a blog about uh, this cool new little snippet that you wrote in, in JavaScript, you know, whatever it is, or make videos which is the same thing. It's basically, you're just giving free content to people to enlighten them, give them value, and at the same time show that you know what you're talking about, that you have the expertise, and that if somebody needs that kind of service, then they should talk to you. Okay, so that's it for freelance work. Um, freelance work, by the way, is, freelance work is nice because it allows you more schedule, a le a more flexibility with your schedule, allows you to be your own boss. But the drawback of that as, as compared to a remote job is that you have to, you have to earn your business, right? You don't, you don't have quite the same stability that you have with a remote job. So, you know, it depends on your preference. Uh, now, uh, affiliate marketing, this, this is what I love to do is affiliate marketing. What affiliate marketing is, is if you don't already know the term, affiliate marketing means just selling something online that's somebody else's product. Right, so if you have a an online course or a, a I don't know, or a, some nutrition pills or supplements or there's all sorts of things. There's a million things you can do to, to sell affiliate because if people if people are trying to sell something, chances are they always want help to sell more. So they will list their products on affiliate sites. So the easiest way to find affiliate products to sell, and this is what I would recommend starting with if you're interested in affiliate marketing, the easiest way to start with this is to go to the affiliate websites. So ClickBank is one of them, or JVZoo or Warrior Plus. Those are the three big ones. So just go to those websites, sign up for an account, and then go look at all the products that you can sell. And there, um, I use ClickBank mostly, which it includes tons of products. There are products that Products about uh, about making money, products about marketing, products about health, products about fitness, products about dating. Um, one of the most popular products is a bunch of plans for woodworking. So there's just about everything that you can think of on there. So find something that resonates with you, something that you think, oh, I could sell that. And then once you find a product, then you want to build a sales funnel. And um, there's a lot to this. So I'm I'm just I'm just kind of skimming over it, so I'll give you more resources later about how to how to learn this in depth. But you want to build a sales funnel with an opt-in page. So the basic way to uh, to get an affiliate sale is just get the get find the product that you want on these affiliate websites, then get the link from the website that's your 
particular affiliate link where if somebody clicks on it and somebody buys a product, then you get a portion, you get a commission of that sale. Well, you also want to have an opt-in page. This is very important because that gives you the contact info of this person so you can sell them more and more stuff, right? So the best way to do that, in my opinion, is to build a sales funnel with an opt-in page. So I do that in ClickFunnels which makes it super easy. I can build a new sales funnel in half an hour and have it, have it live, right? So I can have the opt-in page and, um, which uh, opt-in page, by the way, that's where somebody enters their information so that you have it for, for the future. So um, yeah, build your sales funnel with the opt-in page so somebody enters their info and then after they enter their info, then it redirects them to your affiliate link. And if they, if they buy, then you get a portion of the sale. And you get big commissions, by the way, on a lot of these products. Like I've seen 50%, 70%, I've, I've even seen 100%. People, <laughs> people will let you sell their, their product for 100% because they're hoping that they will buy more products from them in the future. Um, and then, okay, so once you have your, your funnel set up, then you wanna drive traffic to the funnel. There's two ways to drive traffic. There's organic traffic and paid traffic. Organic traffic means traffic that you don't have to pay for, traffic that people uh, when I say traffic, I mean people that go to the website. So organic traffic means people that go to the website because of some, usually from some content that you have. So maybe you posted a link on your social media, maybe you have a blog, maybe you have a YouTube channel, maybe you have a podcast, you know, anything that people listen to just because they want to listen to it. And then you can say, by the way, check out this great widget. Um, here's the link, right? And then people click on your link and you get paid. And then the other way is paid traffic, which is, is paid advertising. So you can advertise on a whole bunch of different websites, like all the social media websites. Uh, Facebook is the most popular probably, and YouTube and Google, Google AdWords, and Pinterest has ads, and Reddit has ads, and everybody has ads. So there's a whole bunch of different ways to get paid traffic too. So if you don't have a blog or something, or you... Um, or you just you just want more traffic than you can get organic, then you can pay for traffic. Paid traffic is actually pretty nice because you can you can compare the cost and benefit, right? So say you spend $100 on paid traffic and you get $200 worth of commissions, well, you've just doubled your money, right? And then, so you can scale that. You can say, okay, I, I doubled my money on $100, so now I'm gonna put $1,000 into paid ads. And then you get $2,000 in, in money returns. So um, that's an, actually a really excellent option. And uh, then you want to use an e email autoresponder and build a list. So what that means is you get a, a service that allows you to build a list of email addresses and then it lets you send emails to them automatically. So once you got somebody to opt in, whether they bought the product or not, well now you have their email address so you can send them emails with other products, with other affiliate links. So you can, you can get a whole bunch of extra traffic to your affiliate links without ever having to pay any more than you had to pay at, and to initially get the email address. So I re recommend using Aweber for that. Aweber is nice. That's what I've been using for a long time. And then um, now this is obviously a very quick overview. So if you're interested in affiliate marketing, which I highly recommend, by the way, because affiliate marketing is, is, offers you all of the flexibility you, you have complete control over your own schedule. You're completely location independent and you have no ceiling on your income. Your, your income potential is basically unlimited. So affiliate marketing is an awesome way to go. Um, the one, the, the drawback is that again, like you like with the, the freelancing, you have to actually earn the, you have to earn the money. You don't have a steady paycheck, right? So, and it takes some, takes some learning at first. So you have to, you have to be willing to be bad long enough to be good long enough to get good, as my mentor says. So that's something that does have a little bit of a learning curve. But um, I want to recommend, if you want to learn affiliate marketing, the ClickFunnels Affiliate Boot Camp, Camp course is awesome. ClickFunnels is the software that I use for building sales funnels, and they, are, they have excellent training, and they have their own affiliate program, right? So you're actually selling the ClickFunnels software to, to other entrepreneurs. And they have a course all about how to sell their software. I highly recommend that course. Even if you don't want to sell their software, the, the material in the course is relevant for any sort of affiliate marketing. So I will leave a link to that below in the description so you can uh, 
give that a try if you're interested in affiliate marketing. Okay, now the last way I want to talk about is drop shipping. Drop shipping is similar to affiliate marketing, but you're, it, it's a physical product for one thing. You're selling a physical product, whereas affiliate marketing can be either a physical product or an information product. Drop shipping is all, always a physical product, and you're, you have a little bit more control over the process. You're not sending the, the, the person to someone else's sales page. You're having the sales page yourself. So the basic process for that is that you find a cheap product online, direct from manufacturer, which you can do on AliExpress.com. Everything you can think of, they make super cheap in China, and they have this this some some shipping agreement where you can get get shipping really cheap. So you can find a product for a dollar or two dollars, and you can sell it for ten dollars, right? And this is pretty common. There's all sorts of products. There's a lot of people that are doing this, but don't worry about that because you can find products that nobody else is selling, right? So you find cheap products direct from the manufacturer. I recommend AliExpress for that. Then you set up a sales funnel with multiple products. This is, so again, like in ClickFunnels, what, what you do is you, you set up an opt-in page first to get the email address. I do that all the time, regardless of what I'm selling. Then you uh, send them to, a, to your first product. And you, um, you, so you have your product that you bought for a dollar and then you sell it for $8, let's say. You send them to that product. If they buy that product, then instead of sending them to a confirmation screen, you say, hey, you liked that product. Would you like this, this product also? And you send them another product. Show them another product that's very similar, another one that you found on AliExpress. You show them another similar product that they would be likely to buy given that they bought the first product. And then uh, they can say yes or no, and then you send them to a third product, etc. So you can send them to a bunch of products all in a row. So if you, you get one person into the funnel, you can sell them a whole bunch of stuff. And so you can, uh, that's, that's the best practice, right? So you can, I mean, you could just sell, send them the one product and be done, done with them, but that's, you know, why, if you have their attention already, why waste it? So, uh, of course, once you have your funnel set up with all your products that you want to sell, then you have to drive traffic to the funnel, which can be organic traffic or paid traffic. Again, this is the same as with affiliate marketing, organic traffic from your blog or your social media or your YouTube channel or whatever it is, or paid traffic that you, you paid ads to get. And then again, the paid traffic is nice because you can compare your cost and benefit. If you spend $5 for a customer and sell $10 worth of product to that customer, then you're, you're doing well and you can scale it up as much as you want. And then uh, use the email autoresponder and build a list. Again, same as affiliate marketing. You have, you'll have more products that you sell in the future. So keep the email list and then give them more offers as time goes on. Now, uh, drop shipping. If you want to learn drop shipping, I recommend the uh, drop shipping masterclass by Kevin David, which is also for free. I will leave the link to that below. That's, this is an awesome way to, to make a lot of money, and it's nice because it's not as competitive as affiliate marketing in that there are a million different products that you can drop ship. There are not as many. There are a lot of affiliate products, but not quite as many products as you can find with drop shipping. So um, that's it for the, the four ways that, that I'm going to go over to earn money online. Now, there are a lot more ways than this to earn, earn money online. So be creative. If you can figure out some others, leave them in the comments. Let me know what you found out because I'm, I'm happy to learn more. There, I'm sure there's, there's a million different ways because with technology, there's, uh, you're basically unlimited. And then uh, next point is you don't necessarily have to earn money online to be location independent. Now, you think digital nomad, it has digital in the name, so obviously you're making money online, but some people can travel and just do work at whatever location they happen to be. I met a guy a couple of weeks ago who has a really cool little business. He just, he's an artist and he will go into a city center wherever, it doesn't matter where, and he will find people that are, that are standing around or sitting around and he will do a quick drawing of, of the people and then he will go give the people the drawing in return for a tip. And he makes pretty good money doing this. Again, this is not something online. This is something that's in person, but it doesn't matter where he is because there's always people standing around the city center, whatever city you're in. So 
be creative. There's, there's, especially if you're artistic, right? I, I know people who do the same thing with music. They just play music. They play guitar in the street corner and get tips, you know? So there's a lot of things that you can do in any location that aren't necessarily online. So consider that too, if your goal is to be able to travel. So that's about it. Uh, if you like this video, please like the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the video and hit the bell beside the subscribe button to receive more helpful content in your quest to become a digital nomad. Now, if you really want the easy way, you want me to hold your hand and show you every part of the process from going from regular desk job worker to digital nomad, then check out my course, Digital Nomad University. I'll teach you every bit of how to do that. I will leave the link in the description. That's it for today. Good luck. Let me know how you do with this.